And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. There are some brilliant names of games out there, but I have to say, Gettysburg is maybe one of the coolest ones that there is. I, I, I'm really impressed by it. Gettysburg is one of my favorite battles to read about or study anyway, and the idea of adding the abominable snowmen so that it becomes Gettysburg, well, that's a pretty good combination, and no surprise uh, that it's from the design team of Mike Slinker and Joshua Frost. It's basically a card game in which one player has control of the Union, and the other player has control of the Confederates in some extremely warped and twisted world where yetis somehow got involved in the Civil War. Not only yetis, but mammoths. And everyone else involved just is basically scared out of their wits. But the yetis are there, and the yetis are powerful. Let me show you a little bit about how the game works. Here we see the basic setup for the game. The two decks, Union and Confederate, are basically similar, or, or, or very closely equal. And they are set up the same way. You divide your cards into five decks here on the table. You flip over the top two cards to form your front line and your reserves. And then you draw one card from each deck to form your opening hand. The game takes place in several phases. And the very first phase of each round is basically an, an attack phase. Or players are going to be taking turns attacking. When you do that, you play a card from your hand. So say, for example, I play this infantry card from my hand. I place it in my discard pile, and then each infantry unit that I have attacks. Now in this setup, I have two regular infantry and one elite infantry. The only difference between them is that the elite infantry has two health. I draw a token from the this cup. I have a cup full of tokens. You don't actually need the cup. I guess you can just lay them down face down on the table, but it's so much easier to have the cup of tokens. This token here shows a 2 with an arrow pointing diagonally. I place this in front of me, and that means they're going to shoot 2 in that direction. So this infantry here fires 2 and hits this artillery here in the front. This artillery has 4 health, so I'm going to place 1 wound on him. That's simply one of these counters turned over to the meat side. This elite infantry fires 2 over here, misses everything. This infantry fires 2 over diagonally like that, and also misses. When an infantry fires, they fire the amount shown on the disc, on, on the uh, token drawn, and then they do one damage. Cavalry is the exact same way. They fire a certain amount of spaces, and they inflict one wound. The difference between cavalry and infantry is that cavalry has more hit points. When you use a unit, you notice I tilted them slightly sideways like this. In Magic, this is um, called tapping. In this game, it's called unready, but I get to play with too many people who don't just call it tapping because that's just what it is. Anyway, they cannot go again for the remainder of this battle round. Now the opposing player plays one of his cards, and then I play one of my cards. I mentioned the infantry and the cavalry. There's a few other units. Art artillery, when they fire, that when they draw the token, that is how far they fire, but that's also how many wounds they inflict. And obviously, when you take wounds that are equal to your health, your gone infantry are going to be gone very quickly as long as they take any wound. Yetis are even more dangerous. When you play a Yeti command card, all your Yetis will just charge into battle in a ferocious rage. They run all the way up into the trench, and then they're going. you draw a token, and they will deliver that many wounds one space ahead in the direction of the token that's drawn. Unfortunately, a Yeti will run right through. This Yeti here runs through my infantry, killing him on the way to get into battle. Yeti are ferocious beasts, and they will even kill each other to get into battle. Not only are they ferocious, but if you accidentally hit them with friendly fire, they will then turn on you in the future, which is really annoying. The only other major rule is that when an artillery, these mammoths that are throwing cannonballs, when it takes its final wound, it explodes, doing one damage to each card around it. At the end of a round, players have some options that they can do with officers placed on the board. Officers cannot attack. They're basically a waste of time during the battle, and they're very easy to kill. But there's a few things that officers can do. For one, they can switch places in line with someone who's next to them. Or you can pull one officer from your uh, dead pile and put him on a board. Or switching it with a unit that's there. Or you can take an officer on the board and put him in your dead pile, putting a unit on the board. It gives officers a bit of flexibility. And once you put an officer on the board, that officer can take adjacent units. And that's adjacent in all directions, including diagonally. And basically can make them ready again. And so some 
Generals, for example here, General Meade, have, can do four adjacent troops, and they basically can untap a lot of your army and get them ready for battle again. And once the turn is over, you then will move people up into positions that have been vacated or because of death or because of yetis charging into the trench and turn over cards to replace them. And then you refill your hand, drawing from any deck you want. If at any point you are forced to draw from one of these five decks and you no longer have cards in that deck, then you've lost the game and your opponent has won. There's a lot of things I really like about this game. One of the things I like is the artwork. I really like how they they drew the infantry here looking like they're scared to death because of these yetis. In fact, most of the officers and soldiers look either ridiculous or scared to death. I did notice that General Lee looks pretty much as he normally does because, let's face it, you, you don't mess with General Lee. But General Longstreet is actually a yeti. And just the idea of the theme of the yetis in which they're fighting, but they, they're, they're so enraged and they're actually drawn by the, the fighting rather than any sort of cause, I really find interesting. Because it, using them in battle, having them run up and crush your own troops just to get in battle, and then having them on the front lines taking a chance that you will accidentally fire upon them and have them turn around at you, it just really makes the game thematic. The game mostly revolves around this chip-pulling system where you pull chits and they have a number on them from one to four. Most of them are two to three. But there's several ones and a few fours. And then the direction. I, I really find it interesting. There's luck involved in that. You'll have everything ready to go. You'll have your troops exactly where you want them. And they'll fire at nothing. Or they'll fire and hit your own troops. Or they just won't do any damage while the opponents will run in and they'll fire upon you. Or sometimes you'll see that you'll have a lot of troops on the board and you just don't have a card to control them. Uh, like I'll have a whole lot of yetis on the board, which is useful. But with no yeti card in my hand, what am I supposed to do? Now, playing an officer card helps offset that, and there's a, you can get rid of cards from your hand and, and try and pull more, send people on suicide missions, but basically it's a card conservation game. You're trying to keep cards as long as you can, because if you can force the other guy to run out of one of his decks, then you've won the game. The game is simple, it's fun, it takes about 20 minutes to play once you're into it. The idea of pulling these chits for direction and damage is very entertaining, and the idea the different units really have a different feel to them. And I really appreciate that. It's very, very simple and yet very silly. Yettysburg, it's the first in a series, Titanic Battles in History. The next one, I think, is uh, Dismember the Alamo. So I don't know. I'm sure if you're a history buff, you're thinking, what have they done? Everyone else is thinking, cool. And that's why you should check out the game. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.